to answer your question, yes, a lot of people are making ridiculous amounts of money through mining cryptocurrencies. Ethereum especially has netted nearly $2 billion in revenue simply in the month of May. Also, before we get into more detail, I want to make sure you realize that because I'm talking about cryptocurrency, there are going to be people in the comments who are going to try to get you to go to some Telegram group or look up some scam trader. Please don't go off this website to give away your coins or deal with any questionable individuals that aren't in the public light. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, I do want to get into the significance of mining. Cryptocurrency mining, as well as new methods like staking, have been very profitable for many of the early adopters. And while it is no secret at all that the crypto market has seen a huge correction recently, a massive dip, a bit of a bounce, and now we're just sort of sitting flat. And we can see this throughout the market. Tons of coins are trading a lot lower than they were a month ago. However, thankfully, there is a really useful website called whattomine.com. This website is just a web calculator that will let you sort out what coins are most profitable for you to mine. And it's pretty simple. You just put in what sort of graphics cards you have. In this case, let's go with one NVIDIA card, a 2060, and one AMD card, a 5700 XT. And then you input your power cost. I do want to say just straight up, if you currently do not have a powerful GPU or power is incredibly expensive where you live, then it's most likely not going to be profitable for you to mine. If you haven't been keeping track of graphics card prices as well as PC hardware in general, prices have been insane recently. And there are tons and tons of different coins out there that use different types of algorithms to mine coins. One of them that stirred up a lot of drama and news is a coin called Chia that actually uses hard drive space in order to mine the coin using a system called proof of space. And this led to shortages in tons and tons of hard drives and SSDs. So there are tons of different coins out there with different algorithms that try to mine in different ways. Not everything is mined on GPUs. Things like Bitcoin, you don't actually really mine Bitcoin on a graphics card anymore. Back in the early days, you used to do that, but because of the way it's designed, it's not resistant to application-specific circuits. So you have to use specific Bitcoin miners to mine now. Since after that technology was invented, tons and tons of miners were using it, and the difficulty got so high that GPUs simply aren't feasible anymore. And difficulty is really built into almost all coins on the market. Difficulty is a pretty simple algorithm that simply adjusts how hard it is to get rewards from mining. So the more computational power you have, it doesn't mean that more Bitcoin is going to be produced or more Ethereum is going to be produced. Instead, it's going to be less and less rewards for the amount of computational power that you put into the network. If we take a look at Bitcoin difficulty of all time, it has really skyrocketed as the price has skyrocketed. Just in the past three years, we've seen a pretty steady climb and then a bit of a dip right now since cryptocurrencies are worth less. So the profitability calculations change a little. Anyway, if you don't have the hardware on hand, it's going to be very, very expensive to actually get a card. And if you don't intend to use graphics cards for anything other than mining, then I would probably just advise against it. Really, this video is more targeted for gamers or content creators, people who have a powerful PC that are wondering if it makes sense to mine in their downtime. And I'll say that personally, I've actually made a fantastic amount of money simply letting my computers mine while I'm sleeping or while I'm at work, things like that. Or simply in the background when I'm just perusing the internet. Anyway, let's get back to our calculator. We have our two cards inputted and this will have tons of the most common algorithms out there and you can choose to include or exclude certain algorithms if you don't like them. But this will assign the net value from each of these algorithms. You could simply deselect one of these cards and that will change what your algorithms look like. But sometimes managing mining multiple coins, especially with payout periods, can kind of be a pain in the butt. So generally my approach is simply to enable what I have and see what's most profitable. Put in the cost for power, profitability you can do over 24 hours, average of last 24 hours, common exchanges, and then you simply calculate. And in this case, unsurprisingly, the most profitable is Ethereum right now. And given the cost of power, you would still be making around $5.68 per day, which is not a bad chunk of money. Now you might be saying, that sounds like a lot of work for 
just around $5 a day in 100 days, well, in 100 days, it's going to be over $500. And if you're actually bullish on cryptocurrency, if you think Ethereum is going to go up in the future, it was at $4,000. If it doubles in price, then effectively, you're investing. You're making over $10 a day. So in 100 days, you're making $1,000, assuming the price goes up in that period of time. Or it just goes up in the future and you want to sit and hold those coins. It does beg the question, does it make more sense to simply just purchase the coins with any extra money you would spend on power? Again, it's going to come down to the math and even things like temperature. If you're heating up your whole room and you don't have a great way to exhaust that heat to the outside or move it, something like that, then you're also going to be paying to run your AC unit, which consumes a lot of power and your profitability is going to go down a lot. So there's a lot of complications here. And there's also tons and tons of different coins that you might not be familiar with. These smaller coins can be pretty profitable sometimes. And if you're very bullish on them, it could make sense to mine them. But keep in mind, you're going to have to have a wallet for these different coins. You're going to have to understand how the mining algorithms work. And you're going to have to get safe mining software for your device. So... WhatToMine.com is a fantastic tool. You can do tons of different combinations here. Let's say we have five 5700 XDs. We can calculate out. We could see Ethereum is still at the top, but we get a different price. We could also change our cost of power. Let's say we're paying 0.1 cents per kilowatt hour. Still decent profitability, but it's a useful tool for realizing what coins are out there, what you can mine and what you should be mining depending on what your setup is. And different cards are going to have different hash rates for these different algorithms. There's a ton here. And this is not an exhaustive list. There are tons out there. And as I mentioned before, there's algorithms that use things like SSDs or CPUs, things like that. I really want to say that I deeply appreciate your viewership. If you like this sort of content, I would really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want constant notifications, just click the bell icon. There's no pressure to do so, but I would be thankful if you do it. Additionally, if you actually want to start trading crypto, there's two platforms that I would recommend that have a solid reputation. Webull is a fantastic platform for trading cryptocurrencies. I've used them a fair amount and I'm very happy with them. I actually use them a good amount as a regular trading platform for stocks and options and I quite like them. The cryptocurrency trading is seamless and they trade some interesting coins like Doge, which I know a lot of people are really hyped about and really like. It's a pretty funny meme coin. Personally, I'm not involved with it, but Webull is a fantastic platform for trading crypto. And if you want to get involved with it, I'll have a referral link in the description of this video. In fact, if you sign up with my referral link in the description of this video, you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,850. Personally, I think that Coinbase Pro is a fantastic interface. If you want to have more involved and detailed crypto trading, you can get a great breakdown from different values where people have their orders. You can change different things like the time for each tick and candle. And you can get a detailed breakdown of what's going on. I quite like Coinbase and they have been around for a long time. They are probably an exchange with the best reputation, and they have existed for years and years now. They also have a really great interface if you don't want the pro interface with all the trading. The standard Coinbase interface is pretty useful. It's simple and easy to use. I'll have a referral link to Coinbase in the description of this video. If you're interested, I'd appreciate it if you sign up with my link. I will say that personally, if I am mining on something like a gaming or a production rig, things like that, then I don't feel comfortable running closed source software, especially closed source mining software on that machine. Now, I'm not trying to say that any of the people out there who make mining software are malicious or that they're lying to you, making questionable things, but you need to realize the nature of cryptocurrency makes it very difficult to trace. So naturally, a lot of people doing not so great things are going to be jumping into that realm. And unlike something like a bank account where it's insured and has certain protections, if your personal machine gets hacked or your personal coins get stolen, there isn't really much you can do about it. Now, a couple years ago, I actually was running a dedicated mining rig and I did use different types of closed source software. But if you're going to be running this on a computer you use daily, 
or something that you do any significant work on that you have logins, passwords on, then I absolutely would advise that you deal with some sort of open source software. And the reality often is that open source software can be a bit of a pain sometimes. In this case, this is a series of tools that you can get on GitHub to help you out. For my open source miner, I dealt a lot with ETHminer, which was a fork of Gnoil. And it is a bit more awkward to set up. And this has not really been updated in a long time. It hasn't had a lot of comprehensive updates and it feels sort of outdated. With those closed source miners, they have a pretty big incentive to make them easy to use because generally what they do is they charge a dev fee, meaning that it will mine for the creator of the miner for a short period of time as a fee. So the more people they can get using it, the more they can make. So they try to do things like desperately squeeze out a little more hash power, make it super easy to use and automated setups. In this case, for something like ETHminer, it is fully open source. You can go through the source code and see that it is a uh, safe software that is not trying to backdoor anything. The main issue is that it is really a pain to use and the documentation is not as good and it's been updated less. So there are other miners, like a closed source miner would be Phoenix Miner, where the dev is completely anonymous, their software isn't signed or anything, and while a lot of people use it and don't report anything quite yet, there personally is a concern for me if I were to use this on my main machine. If I had a dedicated mining machine that would not see any important software on it, I could maybe understand it. But for personal machines, I just can't advise it. But you do get frequent updates, a lot of times tons and tons of drama from the creators. There's a lot of back and forth, and there is just so much involved with things like this. And mining is a giant market. There are companies like NiceHash, which did the best they could to make it as simple as possible. You just install the software, it benchmarks everything on your card, and it mines what's ideal. Now granted, you can optimize a lot more if you're trying to find ideal coins, things like that, but NiceHash is probably the easiest out there to use. Unfortunately, there are some concerns about NiceHash. Um, when I was using it, I actually had a bunch of funds stolen. They did pay back all of them a couple years later. And I guess technically I made a bit of money because I probably would have sold at market value at the time and Bitcoin went up in price. So by stealing my funds and paying me back years later, I guess they forced me to hold. <laughs> but there are also concerns like the founder of NiceHash. I don't believe he's been with the company for years now and they obviously have some back and forth on, hey, he's not involved with the company or anything. He was actually an international criminal who made malware. <laughs> and NiceHash does have their own miners, the excavator miners, which are very functional and all developed by NiceHash. But again, they're closed source. You can't see the source code for them. So you're going to have to be trusting NiceHash with the security of your system. If this all sounds very overwhelming, well, unfortunately, it kind of is. Mining can be a weird game. And while there are tons of services out there like NiceHash who made it simpler, or even services like Nanopool, which is a mining pool that has their own miner now that has made it way simpler to use. There's still difficulties involved. It is a pretty technical thing. And honestly, sometimes some of these services are kind of scummy. I remember way, way back in the day when I was mining bitcoins and messing around with them. There were a couple of mining pools that I was involved with that completely went under. And hey, they just disappeared one day and took whatever coins I had not withdrawn was pretty unfortunate, but that's kind of the nature of the game when you deal with cryptocurrencies. However, I will say a lot of the companies we have nowadays are much more legitimate. They're not just these tiny little rinky-dink operations with questionable leadership, but still, you have to understand you're putting trust in someone. And even if you are using an open source miner, you're going to have to mine to a pool, which is going to take a small fee and is going to hold your funds until you can cash out. Regular payouts are going to depend on what the minimum is. For Nanopool, I believe it's 0.05 Ethereum, which is a fair bit of money right now. So if you only have a single graphics card, you would have to trust probably over a month worth of earnings with Nanopool. Another thing to consider is that coins change all the time. You might have heard about EIP-1559 for Ethereum or proof of stake, things like that. These are upgrades to the Ethereum protocol that are going to be changing how fees are determined and what is burned, things like that. Ultimately, there is a lot of support behind this because the goal is to make Ethereum a deflationary currency. And if you're holding Ethereum or mining Ethereum, you might say, hey, that's awesome. If I have a bunch, 
I want it to be deflationary so it's worth more in the future. However, with the way things are changing, it's going to be burning a certain amount of that base fee, which means the miner and validator is not going to be getting that giant fat gas fee. I know this might get a little technical and sound weird, but this is going to change mining profitability. It's going to change it potentially dramatically. We don't know yet since it hasn't been implemented yet, but it's coming up in a few months. And ultimately, Ethereum doesn't want to mine for the foreseeable future. As we saw before, there's tons of other coins that will likely continue mining. But the goal of Ethereum when it first launched with the white paper was to move towards a low power security blockchain method. In this case, they're targeting proof of stake. We can go to ethereum.org. I mean, when we look at the Ethereum 2 upgrades, we can explore the upgrades and take a pretty quick look that, hey, they want to move to a proof of stake system. And they actually already have this beacon chain open. A lot of big companies like Coinbase already have staking enabled on their platform, which means that you just tie up a certain amount of your Ethereum and you get paid in Ethereum rather than mining where a bunch of computational power is used and you get rewarded for your computational power. We likely won't see this for years on Ethereum, but the current blockchain is there and you can actually stake Ethereum right now. And massive companies like Coinbase make it super simple to actually do that. Now you are trusting Coinbase with your funds, but Coinbase is a pretty old trusted exchange that is actually a publicly traded company now. Now this isn't intended to be a guide for mining or anything like that, but I did want to explore the idea of whether or not it's worth it. And I'll say that personally, it has been worth it for me. I've made thousands and thousands of dollars mining cryptocurrencies. However, I had graphics cards I purchased for fantastic prices. Right now I just do it on my desktop and actually my gaming laptop as well. There's a couple modifications you want to make. Uh, generally you want to run at very low power consumption because electricity is expensive and heat is expensive to remove. So cards tend to be way more efficient at lower power. And with the machines I have now, I'm still making hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month, even with no dedicated rigs. Obviously, I turn it off when I want to do something on those machines. But if you have the hardware, it can be pretty compelling. As mentioned before, the easiest and simplest way to do it is also the least secure and the most concerning, in my opinion. It's not something I would personally want to run on my own personal system. And the type of miners available to you that are open source are going to depend on which coin you're mining. And different coins want different things. Some want a lot of graphics card memory, others don't care about that, and some you can't even mine on a graphics card. So ultimately, there is tons to consider. And I hope if you were thinking about mining cryptocurrencies and you had some questions about what it's like, that this puts some things in perspective. If all the open source software and mining pools looked concerning and confusing to you, you might realize that, hey, this isn't really for you. You might not feel comfortable running nice hash on your computer. But if you have an extra graphics card lying around and a system with no important documents or software on it, it might be worth just installing some mining software on it like NiceHash that does things easy for you or Nanopool, which automates a lot of it because otherwise you're probably going to need a fair bit of technical expertise. But again, it's going to depend a lot on the coin you're mining. Different coins are going to have different software and procedures. Anyway, I wish you the best of luck in the crypto space. And if you want to, good luck mining. If you're interested in investing in the market with self-directed trading, a fantastic way to start is with Webull. If you sign up now using my referral link in the description of this video, you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,850. And these stocks are selected from companies like Facebook, Starbucks, Snap, Google, Procter, Gamble, and more. All the money in your account is yours to invest, trade, and withdraw as you please. There are zero fees associated with depositing money. You just get your stocks and you'll get your buying power immediately. So if you want a fantastic brokerage with mobile, desktop, and web trading, just use the link in the description below.